when you have something really cool to say, when you have something really important to say, don't pound the podium and be like, this is really important. Don't point at the camera and be like, you should listen to this. And don't yell. When you yell at people, they jump back. They actually kinesthetically disengage from your presentation. When you have something really important to say, just scooby-doo them. Look left, look right, and then drop your head about six inches. And the audience will physically lean in with you and pay closer attention to what you're saying. Hey everybody, welcome to this webinar. Really excited about this one. It's something that is so powerful that you need to master. We are in the communications business, whether we want to admit it or not, and that be able to have that effective communication, whether it's on a stage, whether it's in a video, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, to be able to deliver the proper message that converts, that builds interest, that keeps the intrigue going, to get them asking you questions is so powerful. And you, when you master this, you're going to master converting everywhere you go. Our guest today, Pat Quinn, has spent the last, I don't know what, 30 years perfecting this gift, and he's going to share it with us today. Let me just read something to you real quick. In this session, Pat Quinn teaches you the key ingredients to create the number one revenue generating tool in your business, a high converting signature talk that inspires people to go deeper with you and your product and services. You are one great talk away from seeing business grow significantly. In this session, you will get the step-by-step -step high converting talk recipe that you can implement immediately. It works universally for online stages, webinars, summits, podcasts, and offline stages, your own stage, keynotes, breakouts, and one-on-one -on -one with your clients. I'm going to be taking a whole bunch of notes because I think this is so important and I know that I use these techniques in my business and they're really going to help you. So I'm done talking for the next half hour. I want to introduce Pat Quinn. Pat, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me here today. I've been so excited about today because I know what I'm going to teach today can change the way that you communicate, can change the way that you attract new customers, get new clients. And so I'm really excited about today. Thanks for having me. If we haven't met before, I'm Pat Quinn. And most people know me as a presentation coach, but I actually didn't get my start as a professional speaker. I got my start as a professional magician and worked magic for 10 years professionally. Mm -hmm. After that time, I decided I needed a real job. So I became a public school teacher and taught high school math for 12 years. During that time, I picked up an advanced degree in how adults learn. And so I really bring two things to the table today. The first is a little bit of stagecraft from my years of doing magic. And the second is a real understanding of how someone hears you when you're talking to them, how somebody in an audience watches you and learns from you and remembers you. And, and I'm hyper-focused on your audience. I'll be real honest. Uh, one of the first uh, pieces of advice I give to every speaker is stop filming yourself when you're on stage. Instead, turn the camera around and film the audience instead. And you will learn more by watching your audience in five minutes than you'll learn by watching yourself for 45 minutes. You'll learn the best parts of any presentation and the worst parts of any presentation, the most engaging parts and the least engaging parts. I'm hyper-focused on your audience because I only have one measure of success. My measure of success is not that people would come up to you afterwards and say, wow, you're a really good speaker. My measure of success is not whether the person in front of you laughs or cries. My only measure of success is does the person in the audience want to take the next step with you? Does the person in the audience want to engage further with you? Do they want to take a phone call? Do they want to have an appointment? Do they want to sign a contract? Do they want to list with you? Do they want to take the next step. You get to pick what the next step is. But that is the goal of the communication that I talk about. There's all sorts of types of communication. This type of communication is called communication to convert. And that's what I specialize in. Over the last 10 years, I've been fortunate to work with some of the greatest speakers in the world. I coached Damon John and some of the sharks from Shark Tank. I coached Tony Robbins and Dean Graciosi on their KBB project. I coach Grant Cardone and Michael Hyatt and Jamie Kern Lima and household names that everyone has heard of. But most of the people that I work with are not professional speakers. Most of the people that I work with wouldn't even call themselves speakers. 
most of the people that I work with are business owners or people who work in a business where they have to communicate with people. And I know that attracting new clients, getting new customers, increasing your revenue, and having an impact on the lives of others, using communication, successful communication to convert is the most effective way to do it. Today, we're going to talk about your signature talk. What's a signature talk? A signature talk is how you tell someone what you do and how you do it. It's how you communicate for the first time to someone who hasn't met you before about what you do and how you do it. And here's the cool thing about a signature talk. It's flexible enough to be done in three minutes or 45 minutes. So whether you meet someone at a cocktail party or you have the opportunity to give a presentation on YouTube or social media or a webinar, it's flexible enough to be done one-on-one -on -one or one-to-many. So whether you're having coffee with someone at Starbucks or you get the opportunity to stand up on a stage in a room full of people or go online in front of an online audience, you can use your signature talk. And so the signature talk that we talk about will be used every day in your business. It's not just for if you ever get asked to give a speech. It's used every day in your day-to-day -day communication. And when you do it correctly, I believe your signature talk is the most important, the most effective marketing tool that your business has. When you can effectively communicate to others what you do and how you do it in a way that is fast and succinct, that's going to make all the difference in the world. And so today, I'm going to walk you step by step through the process of creating a perfect signature talk, flexible enough to be done in three minutes or 45 minutes, and you will then have it as a tool, a marketing tool to help you every single day in your business. First thing I want to tell you, though, because everybody's nervous when they hear I'm a presentation coach. Oh, are you going to try to change my style? Or are you going to teach me tricks to manipulate people? Uh, first of all, I'm not going to change your style. I, people ask me all the time, Pat, do you work with actors and actresses? And the answer is no. Actors and actresses are on stage pretending to be someone that they're not. I do just the opposite. I'm going to help you be authentically and transparently you. And I'm going to show you the most effective way to communicate while still being you. I never want you to feel like you're being pushy or salesy or someone that you're not, that's not perfectly congruent with the authentic and transparent you. And I'm not going to teach you any tricks to manipulate people. I think when you are authentically and transparently you, you connect with people and help people, you don't need to trick them. They will naturally want to do business with you. And it's not just my opinion. I always say, if you want an opinion on your presentation, go ask your sister. What I'm going to share with you today is what the research shows. Research from Robert Cialdini, Daniel Pink, Scott Adams, Neil Strauss, Joseph Mark, Stephen Martin. What does the research say is the best thing to do to cause people to take the next step with you? So let's take a look at how you structure a signature talk. We call this a story braid framework because we're not just going to teach content. We're not just going to make an offer. We are actually going to do four things. All great communication happens in four parts. If you're on the phone with someone, four parts. If you're giving a 45-minute webinar or a speech, four parts. If you're uh, talking to the parents, of your uh, parents on the sideline of your kid's soccer field, four parts. And if you go on social media, four parts. All great communication uses this story braid framework, and it doesn't start with your content. Everybody thinks, oh, I've got to, I've got to teach them how smart I am. I got to show them I know things other people don't know. That's the wrong thing to start with. And so is an offer. The, the first thing you should not do is tell them what you're selling or, or tell them what you want them to do next or tell them your business. Don't do that. The first thing you should do is open with story. Open with a story a story about you, a personal story. The goal of this opening story is to connect. And the most important thing about this opening story is that you have something in common with the people that you're speaking to. A lot of people do this actually backwards when they get the opportunity to present. A lot of people go on stage or go online or go on social media and their opening actually separates them from the audience. Have you ever heard a speaker say, I'm the only person in the world who's ever done this, or I got cured from the rarest disease ever, or here are three things that I've done that I bet you didn't know about me and I bet you've never done. 
all of those things are doing it backwards. Those things separate you from the person you're talking to. They don't connect you to the person that you're talking to. Look, I coach three different astronauts. They've been in space. I coach six different Olympians, three of which have won medals. I coach a guy who's climbed to the top of Mount Everest, not the base camp, the top. And when he tells that story in a presentation, how many people in the room can relate to that? Nobody. Now I coach another guy. He tells a story at the start of his presentation about arguing with his spouse about whether the toilet paper comes out over the top of the roll or under the bottom of the roll. When he tells that story, how many people can relate with that? Every single person in the room. What if we judged our stories, not based on how many people came up to us afterwards and said, wow, that was an amazing story. What if instead we judged our stories based on how many people came up to us afterwards and said, that same thing happened to me? Because that's actually your most valuable story. That's the story that will connect with other people. If you've got a one in a million story, you're going to help about one in a million people. But if you've got a one in every household story, you're going to help a lot of people have an impact on a lot of people and get a lot of new customers and clients. My most valuable story is a macaroni and cheese story. Why is that my most valuable story? Because whenever I tell the story, people come up to me afterwards and want to talk about it. They want to tell me their recipe. They want to tell me about Paula Dean's recipe. They want to argue about what brand is the best. It's Kraft. Don't argue with me. It, and Or they want to ask why I'm still eating macaroni and cheese. You know what I call those people who want to come up and talk to me after my presentation or who hit me up on Facebook after my presentation? I call them clients. That's what they are. <laughs> because they connected with me after the presentation. They're now my clients. And you can do that too, if you start with the right connecting story. And so I want to make sure when you pick that opening story, that you pick a story that you have in common with an audience, not a story that separates you from the audience. Now, after that story, I think the best thing to do to transition from that opening story into your content is an I believe statement. An I believe statement is a great bridge from your opening story into your content. And, and, and an I believe statement is simply one sentence where you stand up front and center and tell the audience what you believe. Daniel Pink's research shows that we want to do business with people who believe in things. And so to have a story that teaches people what you believe, I believe everyone deserves to live in their dream home. I believe now is the time to maximize the value in your home. I believe that there is a right home for every family. Whatever, whatever it is that you believe, stand up and say it. It's also a great place to introduce yourself to the audience. When you're presenting, I don't think at the very beginning is the best place to introduce yourself because when you start any communication with, hi, my name is Pat, I do this for a living, it's a little bit predictable. And a lot of times an audience will tune out where if you start people right in the beginning with, I was driving in my car, and I looked up and I saw in front of me three cars that were all pulled over on the side of the road. You start like that, the audience is into it right in the very beginning. They're with you right in the very beginning. Now, when you finish that story, then you can say, hi, my name is Pat Quinn. And I believe that your signature talk is the greatest marketing tool that your business has. You can actually introduce yourself right after your opening story and you'll have people drawn in from the very beginning. That's the opening story. The purpose is to connect. Skip this at your own peril. If you dive right into your content, dive right into your offer, you missed one of the most important steps. Over 50% of the people will make their decision whether or not to do business with you during the opening story based on whether or not they connect with you, wow. whether or not they feel like you're the type of person who understands them understands their problems, understands their desires, understands their worries and their fears. And the way to get people to believe that is to have things in common with them, which is why the opening story is so important. Which brings us to our content. Now, the content is the part of your presentation that flexes based on how much time you have. And so a lot of times we put accordion lines around the content. Because if you're going on Facebook for five minutes, you're gonna teach very little content. This gets shrunk way down. 
If you're giving a TED talk for 20 minutes, you'll have about 10 minutes of content here. And if you want to do a 30 minute or a 40 minute presentation, a lunch and learn at a local business or a, a webinar or a keynote presentation or a breakout session, you'll expand this and probably have 20 or 30 minutes of content. So this is where the presentation flexes in time is how much content are you going to teach? Here's the part most people miss. The purpose of the content is to actually help people. Most people in their content just describe the problem. But people already knew they had a problem. They were hoping this presentation would answer it. And so your, pre your content should actually help people. Whether they ever do business with you or not, it should help them. With no obligation in the future, it should help them. Whether they ever become clients or customers, it should help them. It should not tease them and say, I can help you if you sign on the dotted line. It should not frustrate them by saying, let's talk about the problem. It should actually give them solutions to the problems. So what are some possible content that you could teach in a presentation? You could give a presentation on how to maximize the value of your home. That would be a great presentation. You could give a presentation on what's the right time to sell. People would love that presentation. You want to know a sneaky, clever one? Oh, you see what I just did there? I scooby-dooed you. When you have something really cool to say, when you have something really important to say, don't pound the podium and be like, this is really important. Don't point at the camera and be like, you should listen to this. And don't yell. When you yell at people, they jump back. They actually kinesthetically disengage from your presentation. When you have something really important to say, just scooby-doo them. Look left, look right, and then drop your head about six inches. And the audience will physically lean in with you and pay closer attention to what you're saying. I think it's called the Scooby-Doo because Scooby or Shaggy used to do that before they'd walk down a dark alley full of ghosts. I don't know why it's called the Scooby-Doo. What I do know is it gets people to listen and lean in every time you do it. So here's a sneaky, sneaky good piece of content to teach. Teach how to choose a realtor. We call this teach the criteria. And anybody who teaches the criteria becomes the most attractive provider in the whole place. Uh, I, I coach a plumber uh, and he's in a city with probably, I don't know, 80 other plumbers. And all 80 plumbers are like, pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me. Except Roger, Roger gives presentations around town on how to choose a plumber without getting ripped off. And when he gives that presentation, whether he gives it for 15 minutes or 40 minutes, who does everybody want as their plumber? Roger. The person who teaches the criteria gets the sale. The person who teaches the criteria reframes the buying decision. But more importantly, they rise above the scrum of people saying, pick me, pick me, pick me. And they become the wise old uncle. They become Yoda, who's now advising you on your decisions. And everybody wants Yoda as their personal, as the person who works with them. And so there's lots of content that you can teach here, but teach content that actually helps people. Don't tease. Don't just talk about the problem. Actually give them things that they walk away, whether they ever work with you or see you again in the rest of your life, they walk away saying, I learned stuff there that will help me. That was a helpful presentation. So many people spend all their time trying to convince people that they can help you. Like, I can help you. Trust me, I can help you. Trust me, I can help you. You know the fastest way to convince someone that you can actually help them? Help them. Actually help them. Teach them something they didn't know. Give them something they can do to help themselves. And that will make all the difference in the world. Another 30% of the people will make their buying decision here. And so by the time you get to the offer, 80% of the people have already decided whether or not they're going to do business with you. People are always nervous when they make the ask. People are always nervous when they finally get to their offer. You don't need to be nervous when you get to your offer. Chances, is, chances are you've probably already blown it. You either didn't connect up front or you didn't teach helpful information here. So don't be nervous when you, when you make the ask. Whether you're one-on-one -on -one or whether you're speaking to a group of people, you, you're, you're, if you connect and you help, you're going to have 80% of the room on your side ready to do business with you. Let me teach you one last thing to do in your content section. 
two times in your content section, I would love for you to refer back to yourself by your first name in conversation. I did it a bit earlier when I said, many people come to me and they say, Pat, what do I do about this? And the answer is this. People often ask me, Pat, what's the best content that I should teach? And the answer is, you can teach this, this, or this. I took my garbage cans down to the end of the street today, and the next door neighbor was taking his garbage can down as well, and he yelled across the yard, Pat, is today recycling day? Ooh, there, I did it again. Sometimes I just do it accidentally. Why do you refer to yourself by your first name in conversation like that? Well, if you understand the human dynamic of rehearsed responses, you know that before human beings do anything, they rehearse it. Before anyone sells their home, they practice it in their head hundreds of times. Before anyone buys a home, they practice it. Before we, before we make a phone call, we practice what the phone call might be like. Well, before anyone can engage with you after your presentation, they have to rehearse that in their heads. And do you know the biggest barrier to that rehearsal is actually what they would call you? What would I call that person? Well, you can push right through that first barrier by teaching them what to call you, by just simply referring to yourself by your first name. Oh, people come up to me and they say, Pat, this is what I think about this. And, and just do that a couple of times. Don't be surprised. I, I coach a couple of speakers uh, who told me, you know, when they used to walk off stage, two or three people would be on the up and, you know, come up and talk to them. Or after they went on social media, they'd get two or three comments. But once you do this, those same people refer back to me. Now when they walk off stage, there's like 30 people standing there. Now when they present on social media or YouTube, there's like 50 comments after they get finished. And you know what they all start with? Pat! If they start with the name that you taught them to call you because now they can rehearse that. So that's one more thing you can do in the content. And that change alone will increase your engagements after any communication. That change alone will get people to call you back We'll get people to reach out to you because they're rehearsing the response. So that's the second of the four sections. The third part of great communication is your call to action. I'm actually going to put tactical here because we recognize two calls to action, a tactical one and an emotional one. But the tactical call to action, the biggest mistake that people make here is to give people more than one option. A great presentation has a single call to action. One thing that you want the audience to do next. Don't give them options. I see this all the time on Facebook Lives. People go on Facebook Live and they get to the end and they say, I want you to engage with me. You can comment down below. You can direct message me up above. You can email me. Here's my email address. You can visit my website. Here it is. You can stop by my house. My mom will make you soup. Call me. Here's my phone number. And nobody does anything. And you can't understand why. It, the reason why is because he gave him seven things to do. If you want maximum engagement, the maximum number of people to take the next step after any communication, only give them one next step. If you want people to direct message you, then don't give them your email and your phone number and your website and tell them to comment down below. Tell them to message you. If you want people to schedule a phone call, then don't give them five other options. Just look at them and say, the next step for you is to schedule a phone call. Here's the one way that you can do that. Give them one next step. When you give people too many options, they freeze. They are confused and scared. And people who are confused and scared do not make decisions. It's like overwhelming people with information. When you give people too much information, they feel overwhelmed and scared. And if you're hearing things like, I want to do this, now is just not the time, or I just need some more time to think about this, or this sounds really good, can I call you back never? The, the, one of two problems is happening. You're giving them too much information, or you're giving them too many options. So cut down the information and cut down the options to one and you'll see your conversion rates go up almost immediately. But don't end there. A lot of people make the mistake of ending with their call to action. The purpose of the call to action is to direct to one thing. 
But a lot of people end their communication with their call to action, and that is a mistake. That is a mistake because 50% of your audience is tactical decision makers, but the other 50% of your audience is emotional decision makers. And if you are leaving them with your call to action, if you are ending any communication, a phone call, uh, a conversation at Starbucks or something on social media or a webinar, and you're ending with your call to action, you are leaving 50% of the money on the table. You are leaving 50% of your customers behind. And you're simply not having the impact on people's lives that you could be having. So you also need to appeal to the emotional decision makers. By the way, I can tell by watching a speaker speak in about two minutes, whether they are a tactical decision maker or an emotional decision maker, because most people sell the same way that they make decisions. If I'm listening to a tactical decision maker selling, they are all tactics. They're like, it's 1.27 acres. And property taxes last year were this. The heating bills last year were this. It's just like tactics, 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 tactics. And the emotional people are left high and dry. Now, I can also tell if you are an emotional decision maker, because all you're going to do is stand up and say, it'll feel good. And the audience is like, what is it? And, and you're like, it doesn't matter. It'll just feel so good when you do this. And so it's, it's one or the other for most people. But I want you to be good at both of these. It's the person who can do both of these that's going to close the most sales. And by the way, if you're selling to a couple, you should know that most married couples are one tactical decision maker married to one emotional decision maker. Either one of them can veto this. And so you've got to get good at both of these. And so after your tactical call to action, you should give an emotional call to action. Sometimes that's another story like we started with. Sometimes it's just something inspiring about how they're going to feel or the possibilities here or the feeling that you'll have after you do this. But you have to leave them. And this is true for every phone call. Even voicemail messages that you leave shouldn't end with a tactical call to action. They should end with a tactical call to action followed by an emotional call to action. And you will get more calls back. On social media, do these four things. On, on any presentation, do these four things. In any conversation, do these four things. The purpose of the emotional close is to inspire people to take this action, specifically inspire them to take one action. So the four things you should do in any communication, connect, help, direct, inspire. The help comes with no obligation whatsoever. Connect, help, direct, and inspire. When you do these four things, you are going to see your conversion rates into whatever next step you want. Call me schedule an appointment, sign on the dotted line, whatever next step you want, you are going to see the maximum number of people from any audience that you speak to take that next step. This is not just for giving speeches. Now, I think a great way to grow your business, a great way to attract new clients is to give presentations. I think in your community to give live presentations on some of the topics I talked about, how to maximize the value of your house, how to when is the right time to sell? How to choose a realtor? I think that's great. I think online, I think if you're using YouTube, LinkedIn, I think if you're going on Facebook, I think social and webinars in your own space, I think those are all great ways to do this. But this is much bigger than presentations. Every conversation, every sales call, every networking opportunity that you have from the sideline of your kid's soccer field to a presentation in front of 100 people, the signature talk with the four-part story braid framework will maximize the number of people who say yes to your offer. And, and, I, and if you liked what I said today, I'm going to wrap this up and we have some time for questions. So if you have questions, you can put them in the comments on Facebook. You can put them in the chat here. Uh, if you have questions, you can, you can ask those and I'll answer those. But if you loved what I said today, I want to tell you about an event that's coming up next weekend, November 12th, 13th, and 14th. We're actually going to spend three days showing you how to build your platform so that you can get your message out to more people. The, the entire first day on Friday, November 12th, the first whole day is going to be on Signature Talk, where you're going to have an opportunity to map out the whole thing, test it on other people, get feedback from other people, and get coaching on it. 
That's the whole first day of the event is on Signature Talk. And then on the second day, we're going to show you the different platforms from holding your own events to speaking at other people's events to using social media, how you use other people's platforms to get that word out. That's coming November 12th, 13th, and 14th. And uh, I think we have a link here for that. Uh, I think it's joinplatformlive.com. Uh, there's a coupon code as well. And so I think it's up here. Here it is, joinplatformlive.com slash lab. That is what it is. And uh, that's super exciting. I'm excited about that. I'll put that in the chat here. But the website is joinplatformlive.com. And the coupon code is lab50. And you get 50% off your tickets. Tickets are $97 with that coupon code. Uh, it's a three-day event. If you want to blow up the number of leads you get, the number of conversions you get, the number of new clients you get, this event, Platform Live, coming up November 12th, 13th, and 14th, we'll do that. So Johnny, I know you know the power of great communication. You know the power of uh, being able to speak and be a good communicator, both in presentations and in uh, social media and one-on-one -on -one conversations. What do you think? I think that, man, <laughs> what do I think? I got three, four pages <laughs> of notes. And there's so many takeaways here that are so powerful that um, you can even teach an old dog like me some new tricks. Filming the audience was a great one, but not everybody gets that opportunity. So I love this. If you if, if you've got a one in a million message, you're going to get a one in a million client. But if you've got an everyday message, you're going to get a lot of clients. I think that is so powerful that people need to understand that we need to be relatable. You know, posting your big fancy car online, posting that you just sold another house in four minutes. Is it? That that's got, does nothing for the consumer. How is that relatable? And I love what you said is that um, this whole process is to help you be authentically you. And I think we need all, and I'm all about authenticity, right? And all the gurus out there tell you, oh, just be authentic. I think there's so much power in there and idea. Y'all, if you're not picking up on this, this nugget right here will change your business, I believe. You got to do the work. You got to do the dirt, and it incorporates video, which I absolutely love. Because every time we talk, I say, "How can we use video on that most powerful thing on social media?" Teach the criteria. Teach the criteria. I thought that was so powerful with the plumbers. All the plumbers are like pick me. There's more real estate agents than plumbers out there, right? There's 1.5 million real estate agents or or, or realtors. It doesn't even include the ones that aren't realtors. Um, be different. Be a little bit different. Come from contribution. Teach the criteria. This is what you should be looking for when you're choosing a realtor, right? I think that is so, so amazingly awesome. And then use your name. Wow, that was powerful. That is, that is some deep stuff. Use your name in the conversation. Hey, Pat. People always come up to me and say, hey, Pat. That's so, that's so beautifully simple. And I can see the power in that because it's making... It's probably making this little connection neurolinguistically. Yes, you know, it is. Right? Boom. Powerful. So powerful. And you can use that in your everyday conversation when you're meeting somebody. You know, people always ask me, hey, Johnny Mo, what's the number one thing I got to do in order to get? And you know what I tell them? Right? This is where you start. And wow, that is some powerful stuff. This is excellent stuff. And help them find the solution. That is our job, I believe, as well, salespeople or as professionals is to identify what the problem is or what the client's problem is and present our solution, right? Or, you know, it's not always going to be the solution, our solution. What's our solution? How can I help you? Either we're moving forward or we're not. And I just love everything that you have to say here. I can't wait to watch. I'm going to share this recording with my uh, Explore My Town crew. And I'm also going to tell them all to sign up for this three-day event and a question on that three-day event. Will it be recorded and will you be able to access it afterwards or is it right then and there? Oh, that's a great question. This event is not recorded. And the reason that it is not recorded is because it's not a lecture. Today, I, I taught for 30 minutes. I'm sure there's a recording of it and it'll be extremely valuable to people. Yeah. This three-day event is an interactive event. I'm not going to talk for three days. Uh, I'm going to talk for a little bit. And then you're going to go into action. The audience is going to go into action. They're going to create, they're going to write, and then they're going to go into breakout rooms and share with a small group of people, form relationships, give each other feedback, and come back and get some live coaching. And so the recording of the event actually wouldn't be that valuable because it's an experience. It's an interactive experience. 
and you have to be there to experience it. So there are no recordings of it because it's not that type of an event. It's not a sit and get. If you want to if you want to sit and just get information, I'm sure there's plenty of YouTube videos that you can watch. This is an event where you're actually going to put what you learn into practice immediately. And you're going to walk out of those three days better than you came into them. Yeah. And guys, listen, for the price of what you spend on lunch, because I know you people, I know how many martinis and margaritas you have at lunch. Okay. It starts at 12 and you never go back to the office. For the price of your lunch on a Friday or a Thursday, Thursday, change the way that you will present and approach. And this is what I call self-improvement. This is, I asked that question yesterday or the day before, how much time do you spend on self-improvement, right? Or business improvement, you know, business improvement, self-improvement, those types of things. This is one of those things that you should do, right? I'm saying, I'm, I'm not saying it is a sales pitch. I get zero from this. Do this. It's for you. It'll make a better you. Right. So if you go to joinplatformlive.com slash lab, L-A-B, and use the code lab50, you're going to get 50% off. It's like, what, 50 bucks or 40 something bucks at that point? So it's getting pretty cheap. There's three different ticket levels. It's a, it's a great event. You know, I, from an ROI standpoint, your first customer, this thing pays for itself multiple times over. And you're going to get times over. Yeah, you're going to get way more. You're going to get way more than one new customer out of the stuff you're going to learn at Platform Live. So uh, if, if, if people are committed to reaching more people and, and helping more people and having a greater impact, this is the place to be. I love it. I love everything that you just mentioned this entire time. I love everything that you stand for. When I saw that, when I saw it come out in the Lab Code Agents moderator chat, uh, it, it, we come out with a list. Anybody want, because you want to try to align with something, I'm like, I'll take that one. I don't care about all the other ones. I want that one, all right? Well, because I'm in the line with that. I love it. Everybody go to check it out, man. It's, it's less than 50 bucks for the basic ticket. I'm sure you can get the VIPs and all those other things. Uh, somebody said the link isn't working. Join platformlive.com. Let me check right now. I'll tell you. Join platformlive.com. Let me start with that one. And that one works. Uh, so let me go join platformlive.com slash LAB. It worked for me. Yeah, the, the lab one, join platform live. The lab one didn't, I don't think. I just typed it in and it worked, didn't it? You know, oh, you know what? If I could type right, join platformlive.com. Um, slash L-A-B. Well, we'll take a look at that after the fact. It's working. It's working for Pat. I, it's working for me on the main part. The slash lab wasn't, but I got joinplatformlive.com works as well. You can just go to join platform live. Yeah. And um, guys, do it. We'll get we'll put the we'll double te- double check and put the link in there after the recording to ensure the links are inside of the uh, Facebook group as well. Jake put that in there. So we'll make sure that you get there. It's powerful stuff. Join platformlive.com lab 50. Guys, do this for yourself. Pat, I want to thank you. I'm I'm gonna dig in a lot deeper. Um, when it after this, I won't be able to attend that event. I would, I want to, but I'm going to be down in uh, North Virginia at a real producers event uh, on the 13th and the 14th. Is there not, how many times a year do you do this? Do you do this twice a year, four times a year? What do you do? Uh, this is a once a year event, but we help, we help people improve their communication every single day at our business. You can visit advanceyourreach.com anytime to learn about how we help people improve their communication. Advanceyourreach.com. AdventureReach.com, everybody. Johnny Mo, I'm out. Pat Quinn, thank you for being here. Lab Coats, thanks for having us.